57 and a half feet wide, over five stories tall, and enough thrust to send 13 space shuttles into orbit. Bertha is the pinnacle of tunnel boring machines. But what happens when it gets trapped hundreds of feet below ground level? What does it take to wrestle a 16,000 ton steel mammoth from the unyielding claws of Mother Nature? Welcome back to Constructotech, your one stop site to explore the biggest and most daring machines that stretch the limits of construction and shape the fabric of our planet. Today we're going deep beneath Seattle to reveal what happened when the world's biggest tunnel machine got stuck underground. The story of the Bertha TBM began in December 2010, when the Seattle Tunnel Partners STP won a hotly contested bid to build a tunnel that would replace the Alaskan Way Viaduct. Valued at $1 billion, the project was massive and unprecedented, and so were the challenges that came with it. Projects of this scale aren't built every day, and the kind of machine needed to make it happen didn't even exist yet. So STP turned to the engineering masterminds at Hitachi Zosen in Japan. Within months, the process of manufacturing a custom-built tunnel boring machine began. Piece by piece, the framework of what would soon become the world's greatest tunnel borer took shape in Osaka, Japan. Then in February 2013, after nearly four years of relentless work and $80 million spent on production, Bertha was born. Weighing 6,100 metric tons and generating up to 392,000 kilonanos of thrust, this mechanical giant wasn't just a tunnel borer. It was a complete tunnel-making factory. Once activated, Bertha moves forward at 35 feet per day, using its large rotating teeth to bore through soil and rock. As pre-designed by the manufacturers, a designated nozzle sprays water and chemicals into the soil to prevent the newly bored area from collapsing. Then, a built-in conveyor belt in the machine collects and transports debris into a waste barge. And finally, a small group of workers operating inside the machine installs precast concrete segments that form the tunnel's lining. In theory, Bertha was designed to be an engineering phenomenon. In fact, American media marveled at its sophistication. So much so that they unanimously agreed to call it the Big Bertha. The hype train definitely set off early. But if Bertha was truly going to become the most powerful tunnel borer in history, it needed to prove its worth deep beneath the streets of Seattle. Not long after completion, Bertha was shipped to the Port of Seattle in 41 massive section. The final piece arrived on April 2, 2013. And by July, assembly and tunneling prep were in full swing. At the time, Seattle Tunnel Partners believed Bertha would finish the 9,270-foot tunnel in just 14 months. It was an ambitious target but early progress suggested it was possible. Grinding steadily through the ground, Bertha carved just over 1,000 feet or 11% of the entire stretch within her first five months of operation. Everything was running smoothly. The team was confident, and this sprawling machine looked unstoppable. But on December 6, 2013, something happened. Bertha, with all her power, pressure, and might, suddenly got stuck, buried several feet beneath Seattle. The world's most advanced tunneling machine had met its match underground. But was there a way to rescue her? As expected, when things go wrong in big construction projects such as this one, a comprehensive investigation is carried out. For an entire month, the contractor, in close collaboration with the Washington State Department of Transportation, probed everything they suspected. And eventually, they found the culprit. If you were expecting to hear that it was some mammoth piece of rock, I'm sorry to disappoint you, because Bertha was stopped dead in her tracks by a steel pipe. Apparently, the pipe, 119 feet long and 8 inches wide, had been left underground back in 2002 after a groundwater study. Because Bertha wasn't designed to chew through metal, the collision shredded her cutter head blades. Some believe something bigger than the steel pipe could have been responsible for the damage, but the team maintained their position. And since the deed was already done, the focus now was to get Bertha working again. If finding the problem was tough, fixing it was even more difficult. The process started with workers sinking 73 concrete pillars in a huge ring right in front of Bertha's mouth. Then they embarked on a marathon dig, carving a massive access pit deep enough to swallow an 11-story building. In an impressive display of global teamwork, Mamouet, a Dutch heavy lift company, was brought in to construct a custom-built crane supported by 48 hydraulic cylinders. This monster of a crane delivered the raw power needed to hoist Bertha's 2,200-ton front end out of the ground. From there, Hitachi Zosen's engineers began a deep dive into the damage. During their inspection, they discovered several additional problems beyond the destroyed blades. 
Seven rubber seals had been clogged with sand and water, leaving the main bearing exposed. Worse still, fragments of broken steel casing had torn into the seals themselves. Once the full diagnosis was complete, engineers got to work. They replaced the entire bearing assembly, installed 24 new pinion gears, and fitted new outer seals on the main bearing. But the repairs didn't end there. They went on to reinforce the cutter head with 86 tons of extra steel ribs and plates, lengthened the mixing arms, and installed a new center pipe to replace the damaged one. The repair costs skyrocketed to over $125 million, a steep price for a machine that originally cost $80 million. But the real cost was time. Technicians spent two relentless years piecing this mechanical giant back together. It was a slow, methodical process that demanded precision and grit that saw Bertha make a return in December 2015. After extensive open-air testing, she was lowered back into the tunnel like a sleeping giant returning to battle. For a moment, Seattle celebrated. Bertha was back, but her return was short-lived. On January 12, 2016, a barge carrying Bertha's excavated dirt tipped over, spilling debris into Elliott Bay and smashing into two piers. Two days later, while crews scrambled to fix that mess, a sinkhole opened up right behind Bertha, measuring 35 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 15 feet deep. The contractor quickly filled it with concrete, insisting it was no big deal. The governor of Washington disagreed and ordered all work stopped until the team could prove it was safe to continue. Thankfully, the standoff didn't last long. Within weeks, Bertha was back in motion, grinding through soil and rock once more. By August 2016, she had passed the 4,000-foot mark, closing in on halfway through her 9,270-foot journey. And for the first time in years, Bertha would experience a period of seamless operations. There were no breakdowns, no disasters, no drama, just progress and new tunnel walls springing up. On the 3rd of October 2016, the machine hit 5,000 feet, officially crossing the halfway mark of the project. As Seattle's rainy winter rolled in, she kept digging steadily north under the city. And finally, after nearly four years of chaos, breakdowns and comebacks, Bertha finally broke through at the north end of the tunnel on the 4th of April 2017. The entire city of Seattle erupted in cheers. Reporters flooded the scene and engineers hugged like champions at the finish line of a tedious marathon. Bertha, the machine that got stuck underground for over 700 days, had defied the odds to complete one of the most complex and daring construction projects of the modern era. And in doing so, she earned her place in the history of Seattle and the world of construction at large. But did you really believe Bertha was stopped by a steel pipe? Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to check out other exciting videos on the channel like this one.